Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, assembly to stuff that got painted. <clears throat> like these manifolds, um, painted them with high heat. Um, high heat, just like matte black, you know, the high heat paint is. Um, so, this is your driver's side. This is my passenger side. Um, they're actually... They, these are not new, um, these are what came with the engine, and they, luckily enough, I mean, they weren't rusted out, in fact, this one, especially, is in very good shape, like, there's barely even pitting on this one, which is a rarity with these, so, I'm gonna throw these on, um, with the new Ford manifold bolts, um, we got those, and I also have, use this but I also have gaskets that I am going to be using with these um I will tell you right now just a little you know tip slash in case you don't know fun fact these did not come factory sorry I keep moving it these did not come factory with the 73s the 73 power stroke did not come factory with manifold gaskets um they make these now um this is a really good company, so I trust them, and I have heard they just help with, you know, additional support uh, to re uh, prevent any leaks, exhaust leaks from the manifolds, also in case, like, the surface on them, since some are pretty old, aren't exactly smooth, these will definitely help that. So, I'm gonna get these new bolts with um, gaskets on the freshly painted manifolds, get them on, and I'll update you after that. Alright, so just a little update <clears throat> on where I'm... Um, I don't know if here until I get to the next step. Um, got the manifolds on. Here's the um, driver's side. So, see, so yeah, I got them on there. That is the manifold gasket. Um, new Ford bolts on there. Just a little uh, suggestion. Uh, what I would do is let me put the flashlight on. So, first, what you're going to want to do is your, uh, my opinion, um, get your first, sorry, uh, get your first bolt, um, and get it through that smallest hole, the one that, well, when you remove it, it's the one that's usually stuck in it, it's, the, the, the diameter of the center hole is a lot smaller than, um, of the rest of them, it's pretty much flush with the size of the bolt, so just stick the bolt through there, um, catching on to the hole in the gasket and thread that into the block slightly. That way, um, your gasket and your manifold is held center now. You don't need any, any pressure on it. And you'll be able to start the rest of these. And then, so you'll start with this one. Um, tighten that one, tighten that one, tighten that one, tighten that one. Tighten, you know, uh, if you, you kind of get it now. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, or that's the way I did it. They're torqued to 45 foot pounds. Install definitely came out great. Um, this is just dust here, so don't worry about that. Um, again, gaskets looking great. Um, pretty happy about about the manifold install. Um, here's this side. Same procedure. Um, put that gasket in there as you can see. So once I had the manifolds installed, both torqued to 45 foot pounds, um, I put, I installed my new exhaust back pressure tube that gets, is what sends the back pressure to the sensor um <clears throat> so uh install this was fine um oh and also if you're wondering why i'm putting that on most likely yours is very rusty and if you do try to remove the manifold well if you remove the manifold you're gonna have to loosen this what's gonna happen is this is usually seized sorry this is usually seized onto this tube so when you try to loosen it the entire tube spins and very easily cracks, just like your dipstick tube will probably do when you try to remove this bolt. Um, 
just because they're rusty, very thin tubes. Um, so yeah, um, only issue I had is again, so when I, when I, when I removed this tube from here, uh, it was very tight, which slightly bent this. So I had to get this back into place so that it would correctly fit. As you can see, it's a very snug fit around the block. Like it wraps like right on it. So I had to get that back into place so that those would successfully thread onto both sides and fit. That was kind of a pain, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. I had to just get it back in place. Now it is, so that's good. Next up, got the new dipstick tube in. Um, there's a very small O-ring, very, 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 very small that you're gonna need. It's a Ford part um, that goes on the bottom of this dipstick tube. Um, it's pretty simple, just throw that O-ring on. And then you pretty much just press it into there. You just push it in to that hole into the oil pan. Um, it'll like kind of self seal itself, self. It holds itself in place. You'll kind of, it'll, you'll feel it. It's kind of a feeling thing. Also, you, you know it's in when it's perfectly aligned with that um, valve cover hole where you would put the valve cover bolt in. So, yep. All right, it's actually, I think it's a stud here. It's a stud, and then this goes on top of the stud. So, yeah, guys, um, that's probably it for today. I'm not sure if I showed you this. I got the new crank position sensor in, but I think I did. So that's it uh, for this part. Next up um, is we'll be trimming down these dowel pins right around where that line is um, for the ZF6. These are automatic dowel pins. The reason why they have to be trimmed is because on the automatics, there's this big adapter plate. On the manuals, you don't need them. Um, which is why this has to be trimmed. These are way too long for just the manual. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so we, I just got the new South Bank clutch uh, flywheel on here. Um, we got the starter plate on here first. We also had to, like I said, shorten these dowels to the ZF6 size dowels. Um, they're way shorter. Anyways, um, I know I didn't really show you, but we got an entire stock bank clutch, um, clutch kit for this engine. Um, it's not just the normal like stock application South Bend kit. This is rated for 650 horsepower. Forgot the uh, torque rating, but you know, 650 horsepower, you get the idea. Um, so it's definitely a little bit expensive, but I mean, so far we've gotten the, come a little closer here light on um, got the flywheel on torque to spec um, it is a dual disc so next up what we're gonna do is we are going to throw the first throw the first disc on there um, then there's another plate which we'll show you then there's a second disc and then you put the pressure plate on so we'll do that now um, get the new pilot variant that came with it and yeah so far so good. It's a pretty satisfying install, so we'll uh, keep up the aim. Alright, so as I said, we got our first disc in here. Um, we're going to put this plate in between. Um, they've got it spray painted before, so we know which way everything goes. Um, on. Like so. Try not to get any grease. Line it up with these dowels. Just like that. We'll just slip in. Just like that. So, after this now, you will put your second disc in, and then your pressure plate. So, I'm probably not going to show that. I'm going to show the final pressure plate installation because yeah so now you're kind of back to where like a normal clutch would be you put your disc in and your pressure plate um, so yeah just starting all
What's the torque setting on that? 40 to 45 foot-pounds. All right, so as you can see, the entire clutch kit assembly um, is on. So last time I checked in with you, we had, uh, I don't know if you can see it through here, maybe. There was a second, uh, we had the second um, pressure plate on, or no, the first pressure plate on, on top of the first disc. This is a dual disc clutch. So what we just did after that is I put the second disc on top of it on this side, and then the second pressure plate we just put on and torqued down. I'm um, using this alignment tool the entire time, obviously. Uh, we put their new hardware in, which is cool. They're not the original one. They're not just plain bolts. Um, they come with lock washers on the south end one. So uh, I torqued them to around 42 foot pounds. The sheets is 40 to 45, so stuck with around 42. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty uh, satisfying install. Nothing, nothing crazy with it. Um, they, the way they have it makes it pretty, not self-explanatory, but pretty decently shows what to do. They paint it so that you know where everything should go. Um, because the way they ship it to you, they ship it to you all in one piece. So this whole piece together is together when they ship it to you. So you gotta do the reverse process of what I just did once you get it out of the box. Um, then assemble it all back together on your block. So got that now out of the way. This engine just gained value by a lot now that that's on it. Um, so yeah. On to the next stuff. That was definitely one of the more exciting pieces of the puzzle. Um, so we're gonna keep going. Next stop. Uh, next stop is uh, well, we have those front accessories. Those are gonna get painted and go on soon. But next up, the entire T4 kit that I have. I'm gonna send a powder coat, including those plenums, which kind of came with the kit. Um, they're all going to powder coat. Valve cover is gonna go to powder coat. Once we get all that back, we're going to be aligning everything, uh, making sure everything's good. And then really, we're getting, uh, we're getting there. There's a lot of pieces to engine, but a lot of small pieces too. So we're going to keep trying to keep up with that. And uh, yeah, keep you updated.